In this tutorial, we will introduce trend-adjusted exponential smoothing forecasts. This slide shows two forecasts we produced in a prior video using simple moving averages. The demand data is in blue on both charts and the forecast is in orange. The chart on the left is a three-period simple moving average and the chart on the right is a four-period simple moving average. Do you see a problem with the forecasts? You may want to pause the video and study them. This chart shows the two forecasts we produced in a prior video using weighted moving averages. As before, the demand data is in blue on both charts and the forecast is in orange. The chart on the left is for a three-period forecast with weights of 0 0.20, 0 0.30, and 0 0.50. The chart on the right is for a four-period forecast with weights of 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 0 0.30, and 0 0.40. Do you see the problem now? Let's look at one more set of forecast charts. This slide shows the two forecasts we produced in a prior video using simple exponential smoothing. The one on the left uses an alpha value of 0.20. The one on the right uses an alpha value of 0.40. Have you figured it out? For every single period in which we have a forecast, the forecast is below actual demand. Period 2, period 3, period 4, period 5, period 6, period 7, period 8, period 9, and period 10 are all such that the forecast is below demand. Bias is when a forecast consistently forecasts too high or too low. Not every single forecast has to be too high or too low as we have here, but rather when most of them are wrong in the single direction you have bias. Trend is when a forecast is moving in a generally increasing or decreasing direction. Simple moving averages, weighted moving averages, and simple exponential smoothing do not work well when there is a trend as we have seen here. When there is a trend, we must use a forecasting technique that can deal with trend. Trend-adjusted exponential smoothing is one such technique. Trend-adjusted exponential smoothing is also known as Hoyt exponential smoothing. The name comes from the man who developed it, Charles C. Hoyt. It is also known as double exponential smoothing because both the demand and trend components are smooth. There are two different approaches to trend-adjusted exponential smoothing. In these tutorials, we will be looking at the two approaches I have seen used in introductory textbooks. They do not have names, so I will show you the sets of equations and you pick the one that matches your textbook. Unlike the two approaches in simple exponential smoothing, these two approaches to trend-adjusted exponential smoothing generate slightly different results. For that reason, we will be showing them in two different videos rather than together. These approaches do not have names, so we will just call them Method 1 and Method 2. As always, be sure to use the approach used by your textbook. With method 1, a trend-adjusted forecast is composed of two elements, a smooth error, or S sub t, and a trend factor, T sub t. The trend-adjusted forecast is just the sum of these two components computed in the prior period. The equations are shown on the slide. With method 2, the forecast and trend are both smoothed separately, thus the double exponential smoothing, and then summed. The equations are shown on the slide. As I've said before, review the two approaches and pick the one that is used by your textbook. Feel free to ignore the other one. If your textbook uses a different approach, let me know so I can add it to the tutorials. As with simple exponential smoothing, both approaches need to be seeded. However, as we will see, the seeding issue is a little more complex. Both methods need to be seeded with both a beginning forecast and with a beginning trend value. If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.